Morning everyone, High Mileage Rider here, and today we are heading out to Darren's Garage in Barhead, Alberta to finish the restoration of the 1991 Honda Goldwing GL 1500 SE Anniversary Edition. If you're interested in seeing how the weekend goes, come on back. So in just a moment, my buddy Heath will be here. We're going to spend the weekend out in Barhead, Alberta, rather than driving the hour and a half back and forth, which would be three hours a day. There she is, my baby, 91 Goldwing GL 1500 SE, Anniversary Edition. All original other than the progressive suspension upgrades. Let's give you a walk along the side. And of course, the piece de resistance, the color matched trailer. She looks pretty good. Let's show you what's inside. Inside, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I hope I have everything I'm going to need in order to do the restoration. Got a couple new cassette tapes to listen to on the road on the way down. Those new speakers I put in are rocking. You know, it's not a uh, Fosgate system or a Bang & Olufsen, but it's good enough that I can hear the radio with a full face and my earplugs at 100k an hour. Anyways, we will see you when we get out to Barhead and we'll probably put a few snippets of video along the road. Look at that sunshine. What a beautiful day for a motorcycle ride. Now let's turn this camera around to give you a little different view. This 31 year old motorcycle travels beautifully down the highway at 120 kilometers an hour pulling the trailer. You don't even notice that it's back there. Smooth as silk. I know I'm going to regret this, but I've given Heath the camera. He's even worse with technology than I am. But you know, he's doing a pretty good job. I think he's missed his true calling. Maybe the movies are where it's at. So here we are at Darren's garage. The gold wing is on the lift. The disassembly starts. We are going to take all the panels off, which I'm not going to video because you just watched them the other day when I did the cornering light upgrade. So we will be back once we have everything stripped off. And then we will be attacking the steering head bearings and the front suspension first. And on a side note, I had all of my tools laid out on this beautiful duck cloth but Heath decided it was easier to have them on this handy little tray. The mechanics tray. We'll see how many things I lose. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half to get to this point. Like all jobs on the Goldwing, seat off first, take the stereo off, do the cubbies, do the pieces around the handlebars, side side panels off. I had to take the lower panels off as well to be able to get 
the trim piece around the engine off to get to these bolts down here for the engine guard to come off so we can take off this engine case, the, the side and the back to put the new ones on with the new uh, trim. Of course, the front panels came off as for before, as before, and we had to take the front fender off, which involved taking off the super brace that I had put on. So now we're ready to, uh, next step will be to take the front wheel off, take the front brake calipers off, and uh, drop the front suspension so that we can put the new progressive in. Then we will pop this off, undo the bolts, take the handlebars off so that we can, uh, when we take the uh, front end off for the front suspension, we can also do the wheel, or sorry, the wheel bearings, the steering head bearings. And that'll probably be it for today. The plan for tomorrow will be to do the engine cases, uh, drain the oil out of the bike, change the oil, put the new engine cases on. Then we will replace this left switch gear, make sure we have turn signals. Then we will replace the brake and clutch levers and the grips. And that'll take between tomorrow and Sunday. So we'll see you when we get that front wheel off. Okay, I almost forgot. What I meant to say was we we're going to do this Saturday, Sunday, because today is Saturday. Now, here is the cart, as we said, with my tools. And here are all the parts that I have laid out to hopefully not step on any and break them. And there we go. Okay, we'll be back in a bit. Do I have to keep the order of these? Here we go. Heath and I are going to take these engine cases off and the rear case. It's just a five millimeter. I'm doing each of these. Come on, this is serious business. No laughing. <laughs> While Darren starts to get ready to do the steering head bearings. Did we say oil is going to come out? Here is what it looks like with the cases off. And we just found out that after 9,000K, I could use in a little bit some new front brake pads. Front tire is off. And you know why? Because Heath and I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> so the forks are out. We're just giving them a little clean before we put the new progressive suspension springs in and then the new seals and the new fork oil. And there's the bike with no front end. Once these go back in, then we will do the steering head bearings. Uh, when we had the weight off the front, I was able to wiggle the forks back and forth and saw that there was, in fact, a little bit of notching. So the steering head bearings definitely did need to be done. I don't know if they're original or not, but they'll be all looked after. So there is the new case on. We had to use new gasket, the new head, and we used a, what was that stuff called, Darren, that went the caulking stuff? Uh, three bond. We used a product called three bond in this little groove before we put the gasket in, as recommended by the Calmer manual, three bond. And then press this on, finger tight each one, and we're just looking up the torque specs for each of these bolts. Then we put on the end piece. Like this? Yep. That's not how you use a torque wrench has to be on the end, right? So it reads the torque this way. Yeah. Yeah. 108 inch pounds in case anyone wants to know for your engine case bolts. All right. So we've put the goop on and now we are putting the gasket on. And there's a channel for it to go into starting here. 
start here and go that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the goop is in. We started with the gasket here and we're working our way around. Pretty heavy breathing for such a simple task, Keith. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Real concentration going on here. <laughs> we are available, our team, for weekends, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> and uh, any other comedy needs you have. I think. Okay. That looks good. Yeah. Okay, let's put it on the... Okay, so I'll hold this in place Ugh. while Heath, Heath was really good at screwing on the other side, so we're going to let him put them on here, finger tight, and then 108 inch pounds. Okay, hey, we'll be right back. So there we go. New engine cases and rear cylinder head and the new GL1500 six cylinder made in the USA badge. You weren't holding okay. your tongue right, Daryl. I wasn't holding it right? You weren't holding your tongue right. My tongue was not right at trying to put these engine guards on. So right side engine guard is on. Then we will start to put all these panels on the bottom while Darren is working on the front springs. So we're now putting on all these lower trim pieces again. We put the shifter back on. Of course, we have our engine guard on. So I'll continue this way on the bike. And there are the new fork springs. <laughs> There's the old ones. They don't actually look that bad in my having no experience. This part here is all Darren. <laughs> look at that. No extra pieces left. Pieces are on the bottom. Shifters back on. Vents back on the bottom. And all the pieces on the other side. No extra nuts and bolts to this point. And look at that kick-ass badge. Yeah. yeah. Walking over here. Spring going in the fork. Trick of the trade right there. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> Cardboard on the top. So when you take the washer or the plug out, the spring does not come up and break your nose? Yeah. Well, that, it's easier on the hand. Yeah. See how easy that was? Nice. Done. Old spring. Long ways. That's empty. Okay, so... So quite a bit of difference between the old and the new as far as the spring, uh, the fork fluid. Mm -hmm. Is it just me or does that look really dirty compared to the red stuff we put in the other one? <laughs> Watch this. Mmm. <laughs> Yummy. If it's supposed to be dark brown and sludgy, we hit the jackpot. Yes, yes. That uh, would taste like burnt molasses run over by a dog. <laughs> okay. I'll we'll just take you over here. This is the first completed one. Crazy 
So what part is that you're pounding down now? The slider, okay. The other side slid easier. No, no, no. So all I gotta find out what's going on. Usually, these literally slip in with that much force. It's because I'm standing too close. Here, I'll take a step back and it'll be just fine. How it works. Uh, the left one takes 330, the right one takes uh, 320. 330 and 320. 20 mils of fork oil. And as soon as I walked away, that piece went into the fork properly. <laughs> well, that's if you put too big a unit in. Yeah, you want to put a proper size unit so it doesn't short cycle. And then look at that, just pouring the oil in. Yeah. And then this is the upper bushing. No, this is the dust seal. Dust seal, okay. See how easy that was with the correct tools? <laughs> oh, makes all the difference Done. in the world. Well, we do have heat here. and Well, I could have used this, I guess. <laughs> okay, so this was not the original plan. We were doing the steering head bearings, but... Before we put the forks back in, it looks like it's going to be easier to replace this left signal stock because we have to run the wires down here and down there. So we'll just come back when we're done and go, yay, go team. It's a sad, sad day. <laughs> in order to change this left signal stock and run these wires all the way down here, Underneath, behind the rad, we're going to have to take the front off, the lights out, and this whole fairing in the front. A sad, sad day. We'll be right back. Day two. Next thing we're doing. Heath, playing with Indy. Where's Indy? Where is she? Where's Indy? Here's Indy. There she is. All right. Listen. Today... Not sure why they did this with the GL 1500. Maybe it's because it's an SE, but this is the nut for your steering bearing. There's a wire going through the middle of it. A potentiometer, you said, yeah, for right. turning on and off. Sorry, turning off the turn signals. So, first order business will be to get this out so we can get this off. Then, left hand steering stock. Maybe we'll put something back on the front of the bike, like those forks, and a wheel. So, Darren had to run out, and he left us with big tools. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> so, he's left us with the task of undoing this nut to get to the steering bearings. Take the triple off. Pulling off the triple. Underneath will be a nut with a what kind of washer thingy some kind of washer thingy like this that clamps around it we have to peel those back to get the nut off um, we've exposed the wires that come from this left hand switch gear so that we can see where everything goes uh, it really does look like a mess <laughs> Let's so Top nut came off way too easy. There's the top of the triple clamp. Under that is this locking nut, the nut underneath, and then the steering head bearings are in here. So apparently this spins off. Spins off. It's not supposed to turn, and of course it's turning in my and hand this a isn't little supposed bit. To turn. Yeah. So it's a good thing we're doing this because this is not right. So what you do is you put a chisel or a screwdriver here 
You persuade it with a mallet until it undoes. Righty tighty lefty loosey. We'll see you when it's off. Okay, so we got the top nut off. There are these two little flanges here up. and here that lift up to go in between these little grooves. And then there's a flange there and a flange there that go, that down. go down into the bottom nut to hold it in place. So we're just going to put this back down on again so we see exactly where it sits like that. And I don't think that position matters. Yeah. Because it could be anywhere. Yeah, we're not sure, well, but we're going to put it back exactly right, the same this. way. You could, but put it back the way it was. <laughs> but that's turning, so it won't matter. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're turning this off. Yeah. So that position okay. will change. So, you hear the ramblings of two men doing something for the first time. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully this little video will help us put it back together. All right, there we go. It is out. Now we'll clean this up and get ready to press the new bearings in. And here it is here. This is the top bearing that came out. Top of the triple tree, bottom of the triple tree, and bottom bearing, which we have to press off yet. But we're gonna clean these up a bit. We'll see you when we reassemble the steering heads, steering head bearings, and the triple tree. Okay. Today's stumbling block is trying to get this out of the steering neck, I guess it's called. So we're trying to pry it down, trying to hit it from the top. It'll eventually come. There we go. We got it out with a little persistence. Now the new lower bearing goes in there, the upper bearing goes in the top, and Bob is your uncle. Yeah. Small break to replace the wheel bearings on the trailer. So it's a trip into town for us. What year is it? Okay, so life gives you lemons and I cry and want to get rid of the bike. <laughs> so we put on the new left signal and we attached all the wires and ran everything. And now not only do we not have turn signals, which was the whole point of doing this, we also don't have a horn or a bike that will start now. <laughs> so we have screwed something up royally. So I'm not sure if something that we disconnected taking apart the front of the bike was a pressure switch or a servo regulator or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the steering bearings in we're going to rehook up the potentiometer wire that runs through there. We're going to put the forks on the front tire, hook up the brakes so we can get it rolling again, and then reassess the electrical. Wish us luck. You do it with that. Oh, careful. There you go. I have a yeah. screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Bottom of the triple tree is in. Did you ever put that locking thing in there? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, awesome. It seemed a little going down the road. La, seemed, la, la, la. seemed a little quick. Yeah. Forgot to put the locking nut here and then the other nut on top. Never forgot, just didn't do it. There's a difference. And then we bend the tabs up, correct? Yeah. Okay, people, it's a new day. And in the words of Star Wars, A New Hope. Darren, in his infinite wisdom, looking in the manual, couldn't go to bed last night without knowing why, after we put the new stock on, would the bike not start and the horn wouldn't work. Well, part of it was this needs to be grounded, which it's obviously grounded when it's on the handlebar. So he grounded it and got the horn to work. And then he figured out why it wouldn't start. You look at all of this and you figure... They messed something up. Look at all the wires. Look at all the cables. No. 
When we put the bike on the lift to make sure that it wouldn't move, we left the reverse engaged and that's why it wouldn't start. So learn from us, don't leave the reverse engaged when working on the bike and then try and start it. So we have the old grips off. The new grips are sitting here with the new levers. One fork is on. It still remains to be seen on if we're gonna have turn signals with this new stock, but we are hopeful. We will be back. Okay, so here's where we're at. The bars are back on, loosely tightened. The new left stock is on. The new left clutch lever is on. We took off the grips. We'll put the new ones on. The bike does run. All the lights work, except for the turn signals. And also now the horn doesn't work. <laughs> wheel going on, brakes going on, and then we'll put some trim pieces back in. So really, the moral of the story is I should have just left it well enough alone when drove it with no turn signals, but we'll put the bike together so I can ride it home, and then I will look at it in the future to what is the other electrical issue. So we're starting to put the bike back together. It's looking like a bike again, but I realized much to Darren's chagrin, and you can see him chagrinning over there, that uh, Wayne from Blackie, Alberta, told me the easiest way to do the conversion of the cornering lights here to driving lights was just to cut the green wire going to each of these relays. But apparently, it's not just one ground for the bike. There's a bunch of grounds that all work together. And so now we're soldering them back together again to see if that's why our new turn switch doesn't work because it's not got enough ground. Okay, everybody, we made it back to Edmonton all in one piece. Trailer's great. Bike ran really well. No problems. Notice a big difference with the new steering head bearings. The steering is much smoother, uh, much more crisp. The ride is a lot better with the new springs in the front suspension. The new grips are awesome. They are so comfortable. These are Kiriok and Isogel grips. And I've run these on all my bigger cruisers that I've owned in the past. So I'm going to get this baby cleaned up and my buddy Matt's going to borrow it for a few days while his girlfriend is in town. And I'm going to have to go back to Darren's garage to figure out why I still don't have turn signals. We're going to buy the new relays for the right and left cornering lights, which fit right under here. And I'm also going to buy new relays that fit under the trunk for the turn signals and the hazard lights. Uh, because we did hear the servos clicking when we put the turn signals on, the lights just didn't come on. So we're thinking that maybe the uh, servos or whatever they're called under there are bad. So I'll make a trip to Honda to order some of those. Let's turn this camera around. Okay. So a mostly successful trip. I'd say 90%. We got the steer head bearings done. We got the new front suspension in. We got the grips on. The new um, clutch and brake levers. We got the new engine cases on with the new um, emblems, the GL1500 six-cylinder emblems. And we went over the rest of the bike. There was no issues. We checked the coolant, checked the oil, all that stuff. Checked the, uh, the brakes, the master cylinders, all that stuff. Everything is perfect. Just no turn signals. So we will keep searching for those electrical gremlins to find out why I don't have turn signals. Everything else on the bike is awesome. So until the next video, remember... Keep that right hand cranked and the rubber side down.